Sunflower Hill is a nonprofit organization that was created by a group of families who really felt like there had to be better long-term residential and housing choices for their children. Most individuals with special needs live with their parents. They might live in a group home, but for a majority of those kids with special needs, there are no good options. We want to create a residential community, not unlike senior living, where you can have many choices of activities, of a sense of community, of a meaningful life, long-term for individuals with special needs. You know, there's a pretty famous poem that really describes what it's like to have a special needs child. And it talks about taking an airplane trip, say, for example, to go to Italy. You're going to pack all your bags for Italy. You're going to buy those guidebooks for Italy. You're going to go, oh my God, Italy, I'm going to Rome. I'm going to the Colosseum. I mean, this is going to be great. You are going to Italy. You get on a plane. Suddenly the flight attendant goes, um, excuse me, there's been a change of plans. You are not landing in Italy. You are landing in Holland. And you go, um, I think you've made a mistake. I was supposed to go to Italy. They said, no, you're going to land in Holland. Well, we realized something was wrong when he was two and three and he wasn't talking normally and he had a lot of abnormal behaviors that other children don't have. So I took him to the pediatrician and they basically, you know, said, yeah, something was wrong. It's not what any parent hopes their child's going to have, but He's been a wonderful kid, and we all obviously love him. We love him. Yeah. <laughs> so he was seemingly a normal child up until about nine months old, and then he got the roseola virus, which is baby measles, and then of course he developed the rash, and then after the rash went away, our child sort of went away too. My son, Jacob, has a rare chromosomal condition called trisomy 9. Jake's a fantastic young man, has many wonderful qualities, but he has significant disabilities and he'll never live on his own. I was nine months pregnant with Colin, who is our youngest of the three boys, Patrick's in the middle, and it was the day after Brendan, the oldest, um, started kindergarten. So I kind of feel like I had one day of general ed in my life before all of a sudden the special ed, you know, kind of consumed us and that's been our life ever since. The funny thing about Spencer when he was born, uh, we had one of the little jumpy seats or bouncy seats and he would just bounce across the floor <laughs> backwards for hours. And then about six months in, he had what are called jackknife seizures, and they diagnosed him with uh, infantile spasms, one in a hundred typically boys, and then ultimately he kind of outgrew them. Even though our son Andrew with special needs is the older son, Robbie kind of organically just grew into taking the place of the older brother. Uh, I'm 15 and Andrew is 17. And I help him in lots of different ways. I'm really big into basketball and sometimes he'll come out and play with me and he'll miss a shot and I go chase after the ball and I give him the ball back. If I get stuck on a math problem, he uh, helps me out because he's on a higher math level than I am. I love my brother Taylor because he's really awesome, really nice. He's really cool inside, you just can't really express it too much. Tell us about getting the mail. I get the mail. Ride your bike all yes. the way down to the mailbox, all the way back. Yes. Yeah, that's pretty darn good. I'm a bowler, I'm a swimmer, I'm a basketball player, I'm a flag twirler. They're, they're human beings and they need to be treated with respect and with love and they need the same things that everybody else needs. They just need more help than what everybody else needs. Even if they do act a little unusual sometimes, they're actually usually very loving, like Connor is a very loving person. Hi. Think about the organizations that exist out there. There are a lot of great organizations focusing on helping special needs kids. The kids grow up to adults, and society isn't as interested in helping that adult with disabilities. And that's a heartbreaking moment for parents because your world becomes, oh, we're gonna do all these things, and suddenly at age 22, there is no world. We have to come up with creative solutions in order to accommodate the tidal wave of individuals who will need housing. We have 17,000 individuals who have disabilities. Our local regional center, which serves all of Alameda County, they're adding 120 cases per month. Where are they gonna live? 80% of individuals with special needs end up living with their parents their entire life. I'm not going to live forever, and if he becomes dependent on my husband and I, 
Where does he go? Jake has one sibling. I do not want to burden her. He's not going to go to a four-year college. He's not going to get his driver's license. When you have a special needs child, it's essentially like adding another retiree. The problem you have when individuals get older is that there really are very few choices. If they're great and able to live on their own in their own apartment with supported living, wonderful, kudos. My son couldn't do that. Then you've got the lower end with the group home. I think group homes to a large degree are hit or miss. Some of them are good, a lot of them are not so good, and even if they're good, it's not a sustainable model. The people that own group homes, they own them privately, and at some point in time, they're gonna, they're gonna sell them and, and they won't be there anymore. He needs a place where he can join as a family, because I'm sure he will never get married and have children of his own, so he needs similar people in his life that maybe have the same issues or slightly different that can become his family. You don't have to have a special needs child to care about this, especially with autism. And I think it's important to remember that Sunflower Hill is not just for individuals with autism. It's for all individuals with special needs, whatever their particular disability. It's time for everyone to go, you know what, I'm going to do whatever I can to help make a difference. If we don't do it, who else will? We want Sunflower Hill to be the place where you can live the rest of your life. And it's a meaningful life. It's a fulfilled life. It's an activity life. It's a safe life. I saw my parents were looking at a senior living center and when I saw the brochure for the senior living center I was like that's what I want for my son. With different levels of care and social activities that's what I wanted for Connor when I saw that. I see it as a retirement community like environment where there's daily activities, there's learning experiences, there's work opportunities, and there's gatherings where they all get together, whether it be for dinner, for lunch, for dances, for special occasions and holidays. It's their family and they can grow old with. I think the nice thing about Sunflower Hill is that it's a community of people like him and you know it's it's a sense of being wanted they've been different and even a little bit outcast but now when they're in this community of sunflower hill they all share the same difference in addition to having a place to live we think it's also important to have um, ability to work so one of our ideas is to have a catering company or a restaurant where our kids then make breakfast and lunch and might serve and learn those skills that are normal with a restaurant. We'd like to have a garden, maybe some olive trees, do some micro businesses with sunflower seeds or sunflowers or packaging and really teach our kids some entrepreneur activities that they can be proud of. My name is Chrissy Bowie and I am an education specialist and I work with the adult transition moderate to severe class. The biggest challenge that I have is that I want to get them comfortable in the community and the community comfortable enough with us that we can work together to create these opportunities for them. We keep talking to the Safeway store that uh, uh, we frequent because he knows everybody and their brother at the store. R Rhonda. Rhonda. And he's worked now for four or five years so if we could find an environment that would allow him to keep growing you know, find employment within proximity of where this location would be, I think that would be ideal for him. These students can work. They just need to be taught how to work. The thought that they could potentially hold jobs, that they could still go to an adult day program that fits their individual needs, is just amazing to me. And so what we envision Sunflower Hill to be is very much akin to senior living, where you can have activities, you can go off to day programs, but you've got friends and social, and you're in the security of a community that you know will always be there for you. I think it's important to think that we are not just helping our own kids. We want this to be a model that's helping every child with special needs. Whether you're in a Sunflower Hill community or not, or you've taken the best practices from us, we've certainly looked at other best practices and taken their ideas. We've got to do this in a mode that is duplicatable across the nation. So let's think of options. Five acres where you've got some housing on there. It might be a one bedroom apartment. It might be a two bedroom apartment. It might be four bedroom. So then you've got the housing units on site. But then what? Well, then you want to have the social aspect. You want to have the ability of dances and a sense of community or arts and craft or a computer room. Is it an urban setting? Is it a farm setting? The traditional model that Bittersweet Farms really started is that farm setting. We're also looking at an urban model where we're close to bar, we're close to transportation. 
Or is it a setting that might afford typical senior citizens the ability to live side by side with individuals with developmental delays? There could be cross-volunteer opportunities for both. One of the things that we'd like to do is be very open-minded as to which model works. Maybe all three. Maybe there'll be three Sunflower Hill communities with three different models. But obviously we want to make sure that whatever land we have is the right fit for whatever model we do. We started talking about our vision and naming and creating a board and coming up with ideas and it flourished and people said, I love this idea, that's exactly what I want. And here we are with 200 families who go, yes, that's what I want for my child. Having a special needs child teaches you a lot about tolerance and empathy and uh, unique things you find yourself involved with that you would not have done otherwise. Uh, riding a bike, you know, doing a routine, swimming, um, and uh, bowling, bowling, achieving things that uh, we take for granted. You know, when I start to achieve, and he's he's watching me, he tries to achieve. We um, learned how to paint with some of our fundraisers. We launched our first micro business, a set of greeting cards, Sunflower Hill cards that some of our kids drew that have taken off. We had a financial seminar for our parents. We brought in an expert to be able to say, here's what you need to do. We got our first grant for our Sunflower Seeds micro business. You know, we're on our way. I just want kids like Connor to have a really wonderful future. Future, yeah. future. Future. Yeah. Good future. Good future. Yeah. Good future. At Sunflower Hill. Sunflower Hill. Right. And your whole life, people are still going to Italy and they're bragging about what they saw in Italy. And you go, yes, I was supposed to go to Italy. But I went to Holland instead. And you know what? Holland is actually good. And that whole life, even though you regret maybe not being able to do it, you realize this is the life you were meant to live. This is the life you are supposed to be making a difference with for your child. I've been given Robbie for a reason, and I'm gonna work as hard as I can to make his life the best one and to create the same kind of vision for all the other kids. And I think that's what we're doing at Sunflower Hill.